Hello, this presentation is the first of four presentations which provide an introduction to assistive technology for computer access. Part 1 is an overview of assistive technology. Parts 2, 3, and 4 cover the various types of assistive technology available from monitors, keyboards, and mice. Please note that this presentation will advance by itself, and all you need to do is observe and listen. I will read and explain all information as we go along. This session will introduce the following topics. What is assistive technology for computer access? Considerations when looking for assistive technology? And a comparison of low-tech versus high-tech assistive technology. What is this technology for computer access? Here are pictures of some of our clients using various types of assistive technology to help them ac access their computer systems. In order to begin this introduction to assistive technology, it is important that we define the term. There are many different fields of assistive technology. They range from communications technology to assist someone with speech to mobility technology such as walkers and wheelchairs. In this presentation, we are focusing on assistive technology for computer access. Our definition of assistive technology for computer access will be the use of hardware and or software to assist people who have difficulty accessing computer technology using conventional methods. Another complication in the field of assistive technology is the use of different terms to refer to the same type of equipment. You may hear someone refer to adaptive technology, accessible technology, alternative technology, enabling technology, assistive or adaptive device, or even assistive or adaptive equipment. Also, sometimes people in the field just use the initials AT. When you hear any of these terms, you can be confident that we are all talking about the same type of technology. For these presentations, I will be using the term assistive technology or the initials AT. Before we move to the actual technology, we need to discuss the things which must be taken into consideration when looking for assistive technology for an individual. The key element to remember is that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Even individuals who have been diagnosed with the same disability may need very different assistive technology solutions. Each assistive technology solution needs to be individualized for effectiveness. It needs buy-in from the person using it to be adopted and effective. This means that you need to be involved in the decision making right from the very beginning of the selection process. Unfortunately, many times equipment is selected without the user being fully involved, which can result in either a poor selection or the equipment ends up sitting in a closet. It should be reevaluated from time to time. Your abilities may change over time and your needs may change over time so a solution that works for you today may not work for you in two years. It may change due to technology upgrades. Unfortunately, when technology upgrades occur, for example a new operating system is released, your assistive technology solution may no longer work on the computer system. If this happens, it may be necessary to start the selection process at the beginning again. You may require training to be successful. Some of the best assistive technology solutions may require custom training for you to use properly. If that is the case, then training needs to be part of the acquisition plan. Another area that we consider when we make a recommendation about the most appropriate assistive technology for an individual is whether or not the item should be low-tech or high-tech. Of course, there are many items that fall between these two extremes, but let's take a quick look at the characteristics of low-tech items and high-tech items. Low-tech items are usually freer and expensive and are usable off the shelf. This means that you can just open the package, plug it into your computer, or load the software and you are ready to go. Low-tech items are available from many vendors and can be purchased at a local retailer. If something goes wrong, Service is available locally and the item is designed to be compatible with future upgrades of the computer system or operating system. On the other hand, high-tech items are usually very expensive 
and need to be customized for each individual user. Only specialized vendors will carry these items, and sometimes an international order is required. When something goes wrong with the assistive technology item, it may require shipping in order to get any service. Also, there may be a need for continual updates and upgrades to ensure compatibility with future operating systems. As I mentioned, most assistive technology items range between low-tech and high-tech. From our experience, it is most effective to start with the low-tech options and move up the scale until a reasonable solution is found. We have had cases where a high-tech solution which may meet the individual's assistive technology needs may still not be an appropriate recommendation if they do not have the funds available to both purchase the item and pay for future required upgrades. Or, if the item is critical to that person's daily life, such as a communication aid, the need for local service may take precedence over specialized functionality. So, we have defined what assistive technology for computer access means, we have outlined some of the considerations when looking for assistive technology, and we have discussed the characteristics of low-tech and high-tech assistive technology. The next three presentations will provide an overview of the assistive technology available on the market today. To make it easier to organize all of the equipment types that are available, I have divided the technology into three categories. Monitors, keyboards, and After this introductory presentation ends, please continue by viewing parts 2, 3, and 4. This concludes our introduction to assistive technology presentation. If you have any questions on this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact your assigned facilitator.